all right what's up guys we're back with another video or an update as i should say on the scooter so i did swap over the plastics they've seen better days but they're better than no plastics um same thing with the bottom shielding the back piece um headlights tail light assembly with the rear fender um i haven't popped off the cvt cover yet to see what's all going on going on in there um currently I'm looking for one of these. Um, I think I've found someone who has a digital cluster like this one. Uh, let me show you guys. So this is a digital cluster. So it gives me the RPMs, gas gauge, uh, RPM gauge, uh, you know, turn signals, high beam. Still haven't figured out what that does yet. Uh, it gives me a clock mile per hour and then miles per hour or um, mileage I've been trying to piece everything together for this um, this it seems like I can find this body panel this body panel and the sides in like this weird fake carbon but um, I haven't followed through with that yet it would be nice to get a whole new plastic set for this thing but yeah uh, along with the mirrors I did take off this mirror it was missing this one this mirror i didn't know why until i looked in and i realized there's no nut this one has like a welded nut that sits in there and uh looks like it snapped itself off or someone snapped it off either way um definitely need to get a new seat because it's starting to rip but it'll do for now so currently you guys what i got going on with it right now is as you can see i have the cover off um i cleaned it off even though it rained earlier and now there's like a puddle of dirt over here um I'm double checking valve clearance on this before I do anything else because I haven't changed the oil in it yet. I have driven it about 100, 150 miles now with the current setup. This is a DC setup, by the way. This harness is DC um, versus the red one's AC harness, which I really wish I would have been able to get going. But I tried cycling, I tried transferring over the AC harness into this, and it didn't work too good. So that kind of sucked a little bit. Um, now i did so when i wired up that harness i drove it all the way through the, the clusters are different so that one's a normal uh analog gauge cluster this one's a digital cluster um i'm pretty sure it was more user error than anything but i you know i cycled everything over uh ignition coil um basically everything electronic came with it so cdi ignition coil that came over just to find out that I didn't even realize it but the stator on this is DC so even if I would have got it wired up good it wouldn't have interacted with that good um, I was gonna pull the flywheel and all that stuff flywheel magneto stator and put it into this but I don't have the pickup tool if you guys have never done it behind this cooling fan which I I ordered this by the way the new cooling fans come in um, from unique performance the actual upgraded fan like the one that actually works along with new one of the cowls like the uh, mad dog guys run but uh, you need an actual uh, basically a puller it what it does is it threads into the actual flywheel and then there's a center piece that drives down the center to actually kick the flywheel off um, so definitely gonna invest in that but uh Swap the suspension back over like if you look in the original video the suspension is black and it's a little bit shorter So I went back I took that suspension off that one and put it onto this one because this I like this setup a little bit better I still got to take the center stand because I do like the center stands because I do plan on running a remote start for it um, I need to swap the exhaust well not swap I need to get an exhaust the same thing with the carb I'll do the normal stuff Like performance wise, but we'll get to that. I'll make another video on that um, as of right this second, it seems like, um, as of right now, it seems like this thing wants to top out around 57, 58 miles an hour. I'm, I'm hoping to get to the 70s, like the, uh, my last setup pad. So I'm going to have to do gearing, obviously, trans work. Um, depending, I don't know whether or not I want to keep the DC system or AC system. AC is a little bit easier to find like, you know, ignition coils and CDIs and stuff for because it's more generic, but that's pretty much everything I got down here anyways. So this is all good. 
you know we got everything set up together the fender was actually in good shape but like I said I can find these like fake carbon fiber panels but not for the main pieces because this is a little beat up um, same thing with the sides and definitely the main rears I did swap the headlights over because these headlights are way like are like crystal clear compared to those other ones that were on this um, the tires look all right but I could definitely do something a little bit smoother than these kendas uh, but that's pretty much all that's for this right now uh, the donor though donor scheme better days I mean was, I've got it ripped down pretty good um, I'm thinking about keeping this just to have like a spare panel in case same thing with the uh, front fender obviously I'll keep the wheels I do like these tires that are on it there's just some chain shins which I'm pretty sure Michelin makes a tire similar to that the issue that I have with this motor um, so the guy told me so I, like I said load give me the backstory on this real quick first off he had no title the VIN's clean but if you have no title I can't really get it I don't feel like fighting with them to, fighting with Pennsylvania to get the title so I have a donor scooter now I'm keeping the motor um, I haven't cracked this open yet to see what's in here so like I said I'll try to mix, mix and match everything I do plan on getting a trans kit for that one but I'm trying to see what I can work with right now until I get a parts list going um, but give you the backstory the guy sold it to me said that um, gave it to he, him and his son bought it for a project during COVID you know all that blah 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 I get it here I, I fire it up it does run um, but after running for about a minute or two it shot the spark plug out which is kind of odd because if you've had one of these you know it's not gonna shoot it shoot the spark plug out so I tried threading the spark plug back in started it shot back out again so I thought maybe he got the wrong spark plug so I went out picked up a NGK CR7 HIX which is the iridium version of the normal uh, CR7 HSA plug and it shot that one out too so I'm assuming he cross threaded the cylinder head when he did the uh, the cylinder head rebuild because he definitely did put a new cylinder head on it but the heads are stock that one the cylinder head and the heads are new so that's what I'm actually doing the valve clearances on that right now well I'm talking to you guys right now but yeah he did get a new carb for it he got a new starter for it but obviously I took the starter for that one because that one was like brand new um, same thing with this setup I'll keep all this stuff I'll keep the wheel like this whole assembly is going to stay together I'll keep the engine and wheel together the muffler is garbage that shock is garbage from the other scooter I bought because I bought this one and another one for um, 150 bucks so that's a pretty damn good deal so I have another motor up there this motor here and the motor and that scooter so I have three motors for it um, one I'm definitely building that one's gonna end up being a 171 I was thinking maybe this one I'm assuming this is a 54 millimeter head spacing on this head which if you know 54 millimeter head spacing you have to bore out to go 180 or higher um, the 57 millimeter or B case motors these are usually a case B case motors I could be mixing that up right now but B case motors usually are the ones where you can actually get away with actually going bigger than I want to say 205 205 CC but yeah a whole other video on that so I'll keep I'll keep the carb just to have one because it does it's actually serviceable unlike some of the other ones some of the other ones are actually sealed units where you can't access the jetting up underneath this bowl and then obviously the seat I'll I'll probably trash the seat, trash everything else, and then call it a day. So let's get back over here real quick. Try to show you guys because I'm actually it's getting dark out, so it was raining all day. So this is my first chance to come in, come up here and do this. So if you're like me, you're gonna take that front cowl off. Um, I kept the front open because the plastics are gone. I did order new plastics, but obviously I need them to come in. So in the meantime, I kept this center piece open to help this breathe a little bit. The front is still there, but the top and bottom plastics are gone. Just so you guys know, the plastics are important because they actually keep the engine cool. The fan runs and blows air around the head. They are actually very important. Um, 
It do, I mean, it does help keep it in open too, but the, that fan shroud is definitely better. You, you're better off just buying an upgraded fan, which when mine comes in, I'll do it a video on install, which it's not that hard. But okay, so when you guys do timing, you're gonna need a feeler gauge. And obviously you can already see what I'm set at. 0 0.004 is intake side, 0 0.005 is exhaust side. Now you can do 0 0.005 and 0 0.006, but I like doing four and five because four is, it's just a tighter clearance and it just, it, it less stress. What you're gonna have to do before you do, pop that thing off though, go over here to the clutch or flywheel, go down to the timing marks. Let me get a flashlight, help you guys out a little bit. Okay, as you can see, there's timing marks up there. So there's a T and there's an F. So with the timing, you want the, the T and F, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it or not, but you want the T lined up with that little piece right there. Let me try to get it. So you want that T on the flywheel to match this piece of cast on the motor itself. This will line up with the T. There's a little etched line on the flywheel, so you line up that etch mark, that etch line, to the line on the actual engine case itself. And they'll line together. That's when you know you're in top dead center for the scooter. Once you're in top dead center, obviously, if this isn't open yet, open this. Uh, disconnect your your uh, breather hose or disconnect the hose. Um, if you don't have an, a hose in EGR, disconnect the EGR from the head to that. And then what you're able to do, you'll have the four the four eight mil bolts. Pop the cover off. Obviously, like I said, this guy did a new top end on this, and it, thank God because it is clean and all, all this is clean so I'm going through and just feeling them up so obviously you can tell most of them aren't like this but this one tells me it's 54 millimeter head spacing for and the head spacing is center nut to center nut so the center stud the center stud you measure that and it'll give you the spacing in millimeters um, some are 57 some are 54 this one's a 54, so if I go to buy a big bore kit, which I definitely am, I need to get the one for 54 millimeter head spacing. So we got, and this looks like, it's a Glyxel, it's a Glyx, uh, I'm probably saying that wrong, but it's a Glyxel, Glyxel uh, head kit, so head, oh, it's just an OEM setup, nothing fancy with it, it's just a, you know, just a normal 150cc rebuild. So head or jug or cylinder head if you want to call it, piston, new heads, and it looks like I've got some new valves set up too because that does that's actually really clean. But um, and then what you do, you get up underneath there. These nuts are nines, nine millimeter for the main nut. Now you can do this a couple different ways. You can use a nine millimeter nut or a nine millimeter wrench, and you can use a needle nose to hold on to that. Not the exact preferred method, or they actually make a tappet tool that is a nine millimeter box side with a I think it's a three or four millimeter square that actually holds it. So you can actually hold the nut still, adjust the clearance, and then tighten it without moving that center tappet. Um, like I said, I have to order some of this stuff because it's been a while since I've actually messed with these things. But it is fun. I'll give you that. But like I said, so intake side, where the carb comes in, you want that intake valve to be set at 0 .004. And then on the exhaust side, bottom, you want that valve clearance to be set at 0 .005. And the way you just do that, it's pretty simple. Get your feeler gauge. 0 0.004 for intake and you're gonna slide it in between the valve and the tappet 
Now when you do that, you want some drag there. Like try to get it as flat as possible and slide it back and forth. You want some drag, but you don't want it to just free float in there. Like this one just pops right in there. So that's how you know it definitely needs to be tightened down. It probably just worked its way loose. I mean, this is a whole new top end. And he told me he was dri driving on it for about a little under a year, a couple hundred miles. And I just drove on it for at least 200 miles or 150 miles. So it definitely needs to be readjusted. I did already go through and change out the plug for an NGK CR7 HIX, which is the Iridium. It's a good spark plug. Um, the other option, which is your normal standard plug, um, is called, is, it's from NGK as well, and it's the CR7 HSA. So you have the HSA, which is the standard, and the HIX, which is the Iridium plug. Um, so if you wanna change that setup, that would be a good first go-to because it does help a little bit. Um, also changing out the ignition coil as well. And then obviously carving, exhaust, all that. Well, like I said, I'll get into another video for that. But I'm gonna go ahead, finish this up before it gets too dark. Um, if you guys have any questions on this, go ahead and drop a comment down below and let me know. And I'll try to help you the best I can. Um, but besides that, stay tuned for definitely more videos on this because I got some more stuff coming for this. Um, but yeah, all right. Thanks for watching, guys. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, keep up with all this and all the car stuff because I got a lot going on now. So, and I'm gonna try to preferably post more videos. But so definitely subscribe, like the video if you think it was fun or you want to see more. And um, yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. Peace.